This curried butternut squash soup is so easy, creamy, subtly spiced, and beautifully garnished using the squash skins and seeds. Ready in 30 minutes, this low waste soup is perfect for fall. Hello, I'm Catherine. Squash season has arrived along with cold season, so a soup is on the menu. And this butternut squash soup has been a fan favorite on our blog because it is quick and easy to make. Although squash takes a minute to peel and de-seed, you don't need to pre-roast it for this recipe. So that means that your soup is ready in 30 minutes. As for the peeling and de-seeding, here's how to make it worth your time. Start by washing your squash skin well and make this recipe ultra low waste by roasting the squash skin and seeds while your soup cooks. Butternut squash is thick and takes a bit of muscle and a decent knife to get through. If you're not very comfortable with a knife, then some people find it helpful to prick the squash all over with a fork and microwave it for about three minutes to soften the squash and make it easier to peel. But I don't have a microwave and I do have a mediocre knife, so I'm just going to dive in. Slice off the stem and bottom ends first. Stand the squash upright and carefully peel the skin by running your blade or vegetable peeler down the length of the squash. Thinner pieces make for crispier bits when you roast the skin. Next, slice the peeled squash in half lengthwise and scrape out the seeds. You'll separate the seeds from the stringy membrane, rinse the seeds clean, pat them dry, and spread them on a baking sheet with the skins. Drizzle them with a bit of oil, salt, and pepper, and add other spices if desired, like curry powder and smoked paprika. Roast at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes until the skins are crispy and the seeds start popping. Now, while those are in the oven, you can be making your soup. Slice your squash into one inch cubes. Heat a large pot over medium low heat with a dash of oil or broth. Chop half a medium onion, today I'm using my frozen onion because I don't have any fresh, and saute the onion along with three cloves of minced garlic for two to three minutes. Add in a dash of salt and pepper to bring out their flavors and keep an eye on the heat and the moisture in the pot so the garlic doesn't burn. When the onion and garlic are softened and fragrant, add the cubed squash and one and a half to two tablespoons curry powder. Stir and put the lid of the pot on to allow the squash to steam for five minutes. Stir periodically to make sure nothing is sticking and add a dash of water or broth if needed. Pour in a 400 milliliter can of coconut milk and two to three cups of vegetable broth. You want the squash to just be covered in liquid to create a thicker soup. If you like a thinner soup, you can add more broth now or a bit later after you blend it. Bring the soup to a boil, then lower the heat and reduce to a simmer. Add half to one teaspoon chili garlic sauce for some spice and cook for 10 to 15 minutes until the squash easily breaks apart with a fork. Chili garlic sauce is my go-to hot sauce because it works so well in so many different kinds of recipes and it packs a ton of flavor. But if you don't have this, then you can use a bit of fresh chilies, a dash of cayenne pepper, or any hot sauce that you like, or you can sweeten the soup instead with a dash of maple syrup. Oh yeah, and the soup is already pretty much done. Once the squash is tender, blend the soup using an immersion blender. Give it a taste and adjust the seasonings to your liking. Add a bit more broth at this point if the soup seems too thick for you. If you don't have a handy immersion blender, then you can blend the soup in your stand blender. You'll probably just have to do it in two batches. And if your stand blender can't process hot liquids, then just wait for the soup to cool down a bit. <laughs> And if your stand blender can't process hot liquids, then just wait for the soup to cool down a little. To serve up your butternut squash soup, garnish with the roasted squash skin and seeds. This soup is just what the doctor ordered. And it freezes well, it lasts well in the fridge for a few days, but it might thicken as it sits in the fridge. So if that happens to you, just add a bit more broth when you reheat it to get it back to a thinner consistency. And I love serving this soup as a fall starter and for the holidays. But if you love having soups as your main meal, then check out my very similar butternut squash red lentil soup. The addition of the red lentils adds protein and makes it more of a complete meal on its own. This butternut squash soup serves six and costs us less than $10 to make using my homemade broth. If I use a store-bought broth, it adds about $2 to my overall cost. 
So if you tend to have lots of veggie scraps and you love making soups, then check out my nearly free vegetable broth video, which I've linked below for you. And remember those couple parts of the squash that we didn't use in this soup? I tossed those into my frozen veggie scrap bag to flavor my next batch of homemade broth. Hit that subscribe button if you've loved this video and my tips for reducing your food waste. And this recipe is linked below for you. Leave me a comment letting me know what your favorite low waste recipes are. Thank you so much for watching. Try to stay healthy and eat some soup. We'll see you in the next one.